This podcast is on experiments in political science research. In this module, we'll explain the strengths and weaknesses of different types of experiments in social science research. We'll also explain how experimental and control group design influence the conclusions research can make when conducting experiments. We'll describe ethical considerations researchers should account for when designing an experiment. And we'll explain how different research designs influence the conclusions we can make. I should further add that experiments have become very popular in political science research, so it does behoove us to learn a little bit more about the technique. We're still on step four in the scientific process, research design. Experiments are yet another way to set up a design that allows you to collect and analyze data related to your hypotheses. As an overview, experiments take place in a controlled environment. The researcher can manipulate the independent variable, which is known as the treatment. Subjects are grouped into different groups and experience different levels of the treatment. In some cases, the subjects experience no treatment at all. This allows the researcher to observe how variations in the treatment affect the dependent variable. There are three types of experiments. The lab experiment takes place in a classroom. The survey experiment takes place online. And the field experiment takes place in the subject's natural setting. Each of these have advantages and disadvantages that we will explore in these podcasts. Why use an experiment? Well, if our goal is to have strong what is called internal validity, then an experiment is really the way to go. Because the researcher can manipulate the independent variable, the treatment. And this is not necessarily achievable in other research designs. By randomly assigning subjects to different groups, the researcher can control for all other independent variables that influence the dependent variable, or I should say almost all of them. We'll look at some of the challenges in a little bit. But by randomly assigning subjects to different groups, this is a type of gold standard of controlling for extraneous factors that's available to those who engage in experimental research. Thus, we're able to conclude that changes in treatment likely lead to changes in the dependent variable, that there is a causal impact, in other words, so that strong internal validity allows us to make some fairly definitive claims about causality in experimental design. We also use an experiment when we're less concerned about what is called external validity. And external validity refers to how much the experiment reflects the quote-unquote real world. We know that lab conditions do not mimic real world conditions. A sterile lab cannot um, pretend to substitute for the real political environment. Real world conditions could affect experimental outcomes. Indeed, we already know this. Something called the Hawthorne effect affects all of us. So it's a systematic error. People behave differently when watched. This was discovered in Hawthorne, Massachusetts on the assembly line when observers would take the time to observe workers and note that workers were working particularly hard and paid great attention to their tasks. But then when the observation ended, uh, workers weren't quite so careful. This is called the Hawthorne effect. Thus the treatment might only have a short-term effect on the dependent variable, in part because of the Hawthorne effect. So we can strengthen external validity with using a type of experiment called field experiments instead of just re relying on the lab to uh, conduct an experiment. Now the two different designs associated with an experiment, one is called post-test only and the other one is called pre-test and post-test. So we're going to focus on the post-test only design at this point. First, we need to find subjects. Having done that, we then need to be able to randomly assign subjects to two groups. One is called a control group, and the other is called the experimental group. And this is true for laboratory, survey, and field experiment 
variations on experimental design. Then we create the ex uh, experimental conditions. We give the experimental group the treatment, and we give the control group no treatment. And we perform what is called a post-test measure of the dependent variable that we're interested in. And we assess whether there was a difference in the dependent variable between the control group and the experimental group after the treatment was applied to the experimental group. If there was a difference, then we can determine that that treatment, that independent variable, causally affected the dependent variable because we've controlled for all of these other factors since we randomly assign subjects to two different groups. So the key here is random. And randomly uh, can be achieved by using a random number generator, assigning subjects a number, and then randomly selecting numbers until the subjects have been exhaustively placed into either a control group or an experimental group. So, give an example here of this design. For instance, in finding subjects, we could recruit undergraduate students. And then we would split students into two groups randomly, control group and experimental group, in the way that I suggested. Perhaps assigning each student a specific number, and then performing uh, through a random uh, number generator, continual draws until these numbers pop up, and these numbers can be uh, associated with either a treatment group or a control group, and then assigning students in that way. Creating experimental conditions. So the subjects are given one of two prompts to read. For instance, a control group could be told that they live in a hypothetical state, and the governor in that state enacted a mask mandate during COVID-19. The experimental group is told that they live in a hypothetical state and the governor in that state enacted a mask mandate during COVID-19, even though COVID-19 case rates were declining. So that is the treatment, even though COVID-19 case rates were declining. So I want to see if there is some sort of impact on people's views on the state based upon that information. So the post-test measure of the dependent variable would be, in this particular experiment, asking subjects how satisfied they are with democratic outcomes in their state, and then assess whether there was a difference in the dependent variable between the groups after the treatment. So were the subjects in the experimental group less satisfied with democracy than the subjects in the control group? Did knowing COVID-19 case rates impact subject satisfaction with democracy in the experimental group? So we can know all of these things having performed the experiment. The second design involves both pre-test and post-test. So we find subjects, we randomly assign them to two groups, one control group and one experimental group. And laboratory, survey, and field experiment uh, differences, we still do this random assignment. So the pretest measure of the dependent variable is important. We create the experimental conditions, we give experimental groups the treatment, and then we do a post-test measure of the dependent variable. And then we assess whether there's a difference in the change in the dependent variable from pretest to post-test for each group. So this is a pretest post-test design. Again, we can recruit undergraduate students. Again, we split those students into two groups randomly control group and experimental group. The pretest would be to have subjects rate how satisfied they are with democracy in the US. And then we create the experimental conditions. We give the experimental group a prompt to read. We do not give the control group a prompt to read. The experimental group is asked to read a news article about the decline of democracy in the US. The post-test measure will thus be of the dependent variable. How satisfied are these subjects with democracy in the U.S.? So here we can assess, was there a change in satisfaction with democracy in the control group between the pre-test and the post-test? And was there a change in satisfaction with democracy in the experimental group between the pre-test and the post-test? Remember, the experimental group read that particular prompt, and the control group did not. That prompt is the treatment.
And so we want to see if that treatment had an effect on satisfaction with democracy in the experimental group, pre-test and, pro and post-test. In the next podcast, we'll look at some important considerations about experimental design.